Hello and welcome to this week's GG Weekend Watch, kindly sponsored by SBK with Daryl Carter, Andrew Mount and myself to look forward to this weekend's racing where we have action from Kempton, Lingfield and we're also going to be covering the Ida Chase from Newcastle as well, so plenty to look forward to then and the lads had a fantastic week last week, plenty of winners across the board so hopefully that will continue again this week because we had Fortescue winning at 7-1 to one for Andrew. The Galloping Bear at 9-2 to two for both Andrew and Daryl. Good Risk at All at 6-4 to four for Daryl and Kate. Goshen at 4-7 for Daryl. And Fakir Dudery 9-4, Kate Snapped. And of course, winning tip then for Daryl as well. So the team had a cracking week last week. Hopefully that will continue. Some quite tricky, trappy contests, I thought, then for this weekend. But we will begin with the 115 at Kempton. This is Kempton's opening contest. It's a 0 to 130 handicap chase for five year olds and over over two mile four and a half furlongs. Very open race, eight runners declared. So Andrew, starting with you, please, your first bet of the day. Well, I've napped that Daryl's going to tip Dayran to car crash here. Uh, the <laughs> Alan King runner who he's, uh, likes to follow off the cliff, but uh, more of that soon, no doubt. Yeah, a tricky, a, a phlegmatic um, one last time out over three miles here, uh, coming from off the pace. Perhaps they went too hard up front that day. The, the winner, third and fourth, uh, all came from well back. You just wonder whether he's going to have the race run to suit, whether coming back in trip will, will help or hinder, uh, and whether the effect of that wind operation um, will start to wear off soon. So he's never followed up a win. So at seven or two, I think he is now. I can leave him alone at that price. Uh, Patroclus was quite interesting. Won at Leicester last time. He only beat a serial runner-up guy into second. But uh, you look at his record outside of his seasonal debuts, it's three wins um, and, a, and a pulled up from four starts now. So wouldn't be surprised to see him go well again. Say so day run to car crash. Getting, <laughs> so a nine-run losing streak. His patient style's not ideal for Kempton. He does drop in class, though. Uh, one true king... Would he prefer softer going? Very probably. Uh, Le Chameleon was the one I was looking at. He jumps out to his right. He hasn't had many opportunities this way around. Last time out, figure of eight fought well, where the closing stages are right-handed. Um, that suited. He won well. I thought he might be capable of following up. But it's you know it's a tricky race here. Um, Foxborough is a horse I like. He'll probably be thereabouts, but he does jump out to his left and will probably prove best to go the other way around, despite the fact that he has one at Wincanton, a right-handed track. But yeah, I'll go Le Chameleon for Nick Williams over Patroclus. Very nicely summed up there. You're on form today already, Andrew. I can Where's tell. Where's the first that... race? I spent an hour and a half on that. I haven't got anything for later. <laughs> spent an hour and a half. You can tell the workings come up with exactly where you started. No, Le Chameleon then at 13 to 2 for Andrew to kick us off. Daryl, your assessment of this opener, please. Yeah, I thought it was, like Andrew said, I thought it was a tricky opener. They're, they're all going to be there or thereabouts, I thought. Uh, I, I did calm down on Dayran the car, Jack. Uh, I, do think he's, I do think he's worth another chance. Like, look, he's been running in at these three big Cheltenham handicaps. Mm. Um this is a drop into naught to 130 now. Uh, his, his two wins have come on right-handed tracks, flat, fast tracks, uh, Huntingdon in particular. This is this is a very similar sort of test to that. He's been dropped eight pounds in the handicap for, for running in those contests. Uh, and, and, you know, look, I've been saying for the last few weeks, he has really caught the eye in those, making that bad mistake um, mm. behind Court Cody and then staying on strongly uh, behind Vienna Court. I can I, I know what you're saying, Andrew. I could definitely I don't like to back a hold up horse at Kempton in all honesty. I don't. But I think he's probably the better handicapped horse in the race. And this is far easier than what he's had to put up with the last three times. Alan King's got a good record on this. He's won it twice and twice from four runners, I think, in the last ten years. But uh, the two that didn't win were sixteen to one and twenty five to one chances. So he knows what it takes to win this race. I, I couldn't really have phlegmatic. Uh, he jumps poorly. I know he won last time. Looked quite impressive. But um, he, I thought uh, Smarty Wild was travelling really strongly in that. And I thought he would have absolutely hacked up if not for falling. Uh, Patroclus, I couldn't really have him. I don't really like him as a horse. I don't. I think he's going to be one of those horses that are quite tripless. Uh, Le Chameleon, I thought him and Foxborough were, were closely matched in the font well form. Not a role model I couldn't have. Neil the Legend and One True King are both interesting. One True King in particular... I think he needs to be on the front end and I think he needs to dominate a race. Mm -hmm. And I can see him perhaps doing that in this contest. He's a horse that when he gets in a rhythm jumping, he jumps beautifully, beautifully and he could just be hard to catch if they decide to use those tactics on him. Um, 
I'm probably going to wait until the day to see if I have a little bit on him, just to see if he does, see if Sam Twist and Davies does decide to go from the front. But I just thought that the best handicapped horse, in all honesty, in the race, who was dropping in class, who's got a much easier task, back going right-handed, which his two wins came from, back on a flat track, I thought was Dayran Dekarjet. So I'm going to I'm going to put him up as a bet. Yeah, so Andrew's nap then of the show already lands there with <laughs> Dayran Dekarjet. <Yay! laughs> but as you say, Dara, he has really caught the eye, and he's even been given a two further pound back then for last time out for yet again catching the eye. So we'll wait to see exactly how Dayran Dekar crash as Andrew has now dubbed him, turns out that if he remains a clear force or if today will, well, Saturday will finally then be his day. So we move on to the 150 at Kempton. This is our first graded contest, which is a grade two Adonis juvenile hurdle over two miles. So our last chance really to see any potential triumph hurdle hope. So Night Salute currently heads the market. Pleasant Man in second in the betting, who's a fascinating runner, flat recruit for Paul Nichols, actually beat triumph hurdle current second favourite, Pied Piper, on his debut back in September 2020. So, Daryl, we know how much you love the British juveniles. Who wins this for you, please? God, I, I, do you know what? It's mad, isn't it, that people <laughs> think that beating Pied Piper in a flat race over a mile means that he's all <laughs> We're sudden... it onto anything. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, look, the McNeils might have a nice horse in here, but the fact that they tweeted that, I just think is. is completely irrelevant to his chances in all honesty um night salute is the deserved favorite i would just give another chance though to impulsive one mm-hmm. um i watched an interview with i was i have racing tv on just in the office all day anyway and daryl jacob was in an interview and he was just saying about this horse saying that they never wanted to make the running with him um they they were so frustrated after they had made the running with him at Kempton when he was beaten by Night Salute that they didn't want to do it again. And there was no pace at Doncaster and it was just a bit of a messy race. Um, so he's been behind Night Salute the last twice, but the hood's been on those twice. It's since come off and he, he run really nicely, putting a career best performance on speed figures, on RPR ratings at Musselburgh winning the, the listed, um, was it the, the Scottish Triumph Hurdle? And... Uh, I, I think he's a nice progressive horse. There's, there's absolutely not much between Night Salute and himself. And I just thought he might be a bit of value about 11 to 2 to, to reverse the form. It wouldn't be an overly strong opinion, but um, there, there are a couple of others in here that are nice, like Mocha Devassi, who ran behind Pi Piper. But when you're seeing horses getting beat by Pi Piper on the bridle like that, you know, it kind of tells you the level that the British juveniles are at. And. Uh, and I don't want to back a horse that's been beaten by a horse on a bride. I don't care how highly rated the other horse is or, mm. or, or not. Um, so impulsive one for me, uh, just not overly confident, but I think he could just get the better of night salute if he's held up. Yeah, if he is then held up. I can actually see 13 to 2 about impulsive one. So even it's bigger really price than, than yeah, you were initially really. seeing, which is wonderful then for impulsive one for Daryl. Andrew, your assessment yeah. of these juveniles. Yeah. Yeah, this is incredibly tricky. Um, Mocha Devassi was on my shortlist for the Fred Winter after that Chelmsford second to Pied Piper. You, you know, I like horses with graded form going into the Fred Winter stroke poodles who, you know, come from off the pace and might be given a patient ride at Cheltenham and pick up the pieces late. Um, could go well here if they go like the Clappers and there's probably enough pace on. I mean, Greystone is arguably overpriced since they switched to front running tactics uh, over jumps, uh, two wins and a four win in front from three starts and you know, nine to one is probably a little bit big about a horse who's joined top on race and post racings. I could see him going well from the front. But you've got so many imponderables here because you've got um, Pleasant Man coming off the flat, 175 grand he cost, you know, after scraping home in a 10 grand Yarmouth handicap last time out. That's a nice bit of business <laughs> for selling that one. He, he, he could he could end up winning this and um, you know, running well at Cheltenham, but you're guessing that's the trouble. You're also guessing about two others. The, the other Paul Nichols runner, uh, uh, Rubel, who's who's come from France, and um, another ex-French from the Famous Five, having his first start for Venetia Williams. So there's just too many imponderables um, for me. To, I would say Greystone to small stakes, if you want to bet. Got the running style that uh, is well suited to Kempton, and it's perhaps gone under the radar a little bit because he's trained by Lucy Wadden as opposed to Paul Nichols. Yeah, Lucy Wadden, though, a cracking trainer in her own right. Seven to one then about Greystone, but the lad's full of enthusiasm then about the British uh, juvenile <laughs> hurdlers. So we will we will leave them there and we will move on to the 225 at Kempton. This is another grade two in the form of the grade two Pendle Novices Chase over two mile, four and a half furlongs. Just five runners here. So, Andrew, who wins it? Paul Nichols, yeah, usually. I mean, um, you go back to um, 2006, just over sort of 15 years. He's uh, 11 from 18 in this race. 
Uh, you back the law, you made a profit of £11.53. He's had 10 market leaders in this race in that period. Eight of them have won. Um, now, Pick Dory was well beaten behind a long press last time, but, but you know the Nichols horses were a little bit quiet at the time, and, and the winner is very, very good, and I think we've got a live chance at the Cheltenham Festival next mm-hmm. month. Uh, so I thought you know he'd win it again. He's up against horses who've mostly been competing in handicaps. I mean, Manella Dramas, you know, been performing well, but uh, and might appreciate going right-handed because he does tend to go out to his uh, right on occasions. But I thought Pick Dory could make it um, sort of nine from uh, the last eleven favourites that Paul Nichols has saddled in this race, assuming he does start the market leader. Yeah, as you say, sort of flip-flopping at the minute on showings between Manella Drama and Pictoria at the head of this market. But Andrew siding with another Nichols winner then in this race, Sarah. How do you assess it? Yeah, I'd agree. I think uh, Pictoria is the rightful favourite. Um, I wouldn't want to go steaming into him at 15 days just because of the type of horse he is. He can be a little bit in and out. And uh, it's just, it just doesn't excite me at all, this race. He's the best horse in the race, but he's, he probably should be shorter in the market. But for his unreliability. I thought he paid last time for trying to live with La Hon Press uh, on the front end. He's just never going to live with that horse. And I don't know. He's got a rate of 154 and he's, he's very good on his day. But for me, he's one of these horses that has just been really well placed. And I know he won the bet fair a long time ago, but like, he's been really well placed along the way. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know if his official rating really is his official rating. Because if that's the case, then La Hon Press should be a 170 odd horse. Um, so yeah, it, uh, I don't know. I don't really like the race, to be honest, Kate. I think Victoria will probably win, but I won't, I won't be able to bet on it. Yeah, I, I'm not going to put the gun to your head for this race, to be honest. But if, like you say, sort of lukewarm, then I'm a chance to pick Dory. But again, price sort of dictates matters with that race, which is tricky when you've only got the five runners in it. So we will move on to the three o'clock at Kempton. This is our third grade two in a row now where we have the grade two Dovecourt novices hurdle over two miles. So as good an opportunity as ever to compare the times then of the Adonis and the Dovecourt between the novice hurdlers and our juveniles then with this race. And shall we have one more? It's currently the 11 to 10 favourite. So Daryl, back to you, please, for this race. Yeah, shall we have one more? As one of the horses I put up to follow for the start of the season. I really like him. I think he's a really good horse. Um, he probably got bogged down in the ground a little bit in at Sandown in the Tolworth, but uh, not too much. Like, you know, a lot of people are knocking that Constitution Hill form, but uh, the same people are, are using, you know, no risk at all form to boost John Bond form. So they, they clearly don't know what they're talking about. But um, mm-hmm. I, I think, shall we have one more? I think he's a really good horse. I think tracks like Kempton, like this Kempton track suits him so well. It beat that smart walking on the air um, here in his bumper. He was just so impressive. I just think he's a fast, flat track horse. I know he won at uh, Sandown last time, but he, he sort of went off from the front, didn't he? I really mm-hmm. like him, really like him a lot. Is he better than 133? Yeah, probably. Um, so, he, he, yeah, I think he's the most likely winner, even at his price tag. I wouldn't want to take him on, that's for sure. I do think this is going to be a race to follow, though, because I think there's some nice horses in here who just perhaps just need a bit more time to develop. Um, Akon Risk in second, uh, he, he's still well handicapped off 126, I think. ICO could bounce back. Uh, Fred Arms for Skelton, he won quite nicely that, the last day. Uh, Mariko Davasi is a nice horse for, for Tom Simmons as well. The likes of Russian Ruler, he's got, he, he just needs time, this horse. Uh, he, he shouldn't be fast enough to live with the likes of Shall We Have One More, but he's he's definitely one to keep an eye on. And even Galo de Sesson, so I tipped him at Wincanton last time, he absolutely bolted up. He's going to be a horse seen to best effect over a little bit further. Um, he's got a big gangly uh, six-year-old, so he'll probably improve a bit of time. Um, the outside is probably biting off a little bit more than they can chew, but mm-hmm. this is a good race, a good race to follow down the line. I think Shall We Have One More should take a good bit of beating, to be honest. Yeah, and would you prefer to see, would you like to see him ridden prominently again? Because I actually thought he settled really well when he was out in front, actually taking a look in at everything sort of on the way around. I really like the fact that, as I say, he settled in front. Yeah, to be honest with you, I think he's got such a bit... When I first watched him, I thought he's going to be one of those horses that's sort of sitting behind in a pack and then pull out and just quicken away. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was quite impressed with the way he did it from the front. So, I don't know. I think that's just testament to him that he's now becoming a little bit more versatile. Um, he's, a, he's a five-year-old. He's going to learn every, with every race, isn't he? So, mm-hmm. he's got the raw ability there. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I'd like to see him run, really. I think he'll win, win either way, to be honest. Yeah, I'm with Daryl as well here with Shall We Have One More. I think he's got an awful lot more to come still. So, Andrew, how or do you do you side with us? Are you going to make this a hat trick or are you going elsewhere? Yeah, gums my head. I thought Shall We Have One More probably wins. I mean, he was a 
I was a big fan of his after that Ascot second when he was he raced in the swamp on the inside and he, he was unlucky, um, really no chance with Constitution Hill um, last, uh, next time. And then, of course, won easily at Sandown. Uh, he jumped out to his left that day. He just wondered if he could end up being a reverse Goshen. He's got to, you know, um, <laughs> go, go left-handed. I can risk hung to his left when winning at Wincanton last time. He, too, has got the prominent style that's so effective at Kempton. You look at this race over the last 10 years, no winner was out of the first two or three, you know, throughout. I know sometimes they've been very small fields, but uh, it generally pays to be on the front end. Now, um, the one I'm going to put up as an each way bet, though, is Iseo for Paul Nichols. Uh, now, he won here on his uh, hurdling debut. He's then gone to Cheltenham in that Pied Piper race. And if you look at that race, it was um, one of those Cheltenham meetings where on the hurdle track, he wanted to be coming wide round the outside. And the winner, the second, the third were all held up um, off the pace. Iseo raced in the swamp on the inside rail, and he was keen, ha having pretty much made the running when winning here at Kempton, he was very, very keen. Uh, didn't settle behind the leaders. You just wonder if they go to, uh, well, either one race closer to the pace this time or two, he'll get a very good lead from, um, shall we have one more and I can risk and settle better. Uh, he jumped out to his right as well. So going right-handed again is going to suit. And uh, so you look at the horses who were on that inside rail in that Piper pipe, pipe race. Um, fifth place, Silver Shade, was 16 lengths behind Deseo. And he came out and won at... Um, was it Fontwell next oh, time? Well, yeah. yeah. He may have been slightly fortunate because in turn to Sivilla, uh, made a Horlicks of the uh, the second last or last, I think it was, and, uh, you know, might have beaten him, but it was, you know, it would have still have been a good effort anyway. So I think you can draw a line through that run, you know, upgrade it massively, given, you know, one, he was going left-handed, two, he was keen under restraint, three, he was on the, um, in the swamp on the inside rail. Uh, and, you know, the yards horses were a bit quiet at the time. So, you know, say each way seven to one, um, probably end up, you know, be looking for second behind. Shall we have one more? But um, you know, I certainly think we'll be unlucky not to be in the first three here. Yeah. So playing ICO each way then in this race. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I say at thirteen to two, that does look a, a fair price and about him make a very, very good case at Mister Mount. Right. The three thirty-seven then at Kempton. This is our final scheduled race from Kempton. This is the Coral Trophy Handicap Chase, but of course it has had various names over the years. But it is still the same grade three handicap chase over three miles of five rods and over. I found this race incredibly mm -hmm. difficult. But eventually, my long short list of four then came down to five star getaway in the hope that they ride him with more restraint again, as they did at Sandown last time out, because they rode him more prominently at Kempton on his penultimate start, which he did, of course, win. But this race does tend to have an insane amount of pace in it. And even for Kempton, even though we talked about the pace bias of Kempton then earlier on again, but there is very often a pace collapse then in this race as a result. So hopefully off of the same mark as last time out of one, three, four, five star getaway remains feasibly treated, goes well over this course and distance. So I will take on the favourite with five star getaway. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, Andrew, I just I wanted to leave that pause there just for you to uh, if uh, if I was going to have any sort of disagreement or not then with that. But Andrew, I will now go back to you then for your thoughts on this race, please. The most notable thing about this race is the sponsors have put a hell of a lot of more prize money into the pot, over 150,000 quid, 85 grand to the winner. Some you know, there's 13 runners that the bottom weight mm. um, weight weight is rated 126, I think. Just to, there's there's whole, trainers are running at um, Cheltenham next month who, you know, running for less money in more competitive races, which is completely yeah. crazy. Probably running horses who want to go right-handed as well, just for the sake of having a Cheltenham runner. Um, so I think Ansem has, uh, you know, been um, left for this after that um, win at uh, Ascot 10 weeks ago. Um, tipped him up that day, thought he'd improve for going right-handed again. The step up and trip um, certainly suited. And uh, he, won he won very easily, obviously, the handicap crowd is say, but I still think there's loads more to come and he's got a cracking chance here. Um, Zanza was the second one on the shortlist, and um, he's been running at Cheltenham. He needs a flat track, in my opinion. You know, you look at his record at the likes of Newbury. Um, I've, I've always thought undulations weren't his bag, and um, you know, since his race course debut, um, you know, on tracks without significant undulations, he's won four of his eight starts, um, second, fourth, and a couple of sixes in the others. So he's yet to run at the trip. That's a doubt, but um, you know, I thought a double-figure price he could go well. Philip Hobbs is in good form at the moment, uh, and the third one, Enrillo for um, Paul Nichols. First-time cheap pieces. That's a powerful angle for Paul Nichols runners, particularly when they're finished unplaced on their latest start. They often bounce back in the first-time headgear, and he's um, um, 
won four times following a defeat from seven starts and um, was second in one of the other ones as well. So you know, and realize a bit of an oxo horse sometimes. You know, maybe it's mm. just coincidence and he just needs decent grounds. But uh, yeah, and Sam Zanza and Enrillo um, for the sake of the yeah, I've tipped a winner. Uh, <laughs> and Sam will be the one. Perfect. Yeah, as you say, but but you have made a very good case there for another couple in Zanza and in Rilo in here as well. But main selection for Andrew is going to be and Sam then. Daryl, yourself, please. Uh, Zanza for me. Ooh. Yeah. Um, again, another horse. I've kind of been on this train for a little while. Um, I think he's been crying out to go up and trip. I like mm. to look at this three mile sharp, three miles around Kempton. Um, He's not short of speed, obviously, running over the two-and-a-half-mile trip and, and just giving him that extra distance, I think it's going to help. I Like you, I thought there was so much pace in this race yeah. um, that I thought that it wouldn't be too much of a disadvantage to be held up off it, uh, even though we are at Kempton. And I just thought back on a flat track, as Andrew mentioned, um, I just thought that all the dominoes sort of stacked up a little bit for him here. They've eased off him since, since Cheltenham last time where he just made a really bad mistake. I'll just put a line through that. Uh, and ignore that. And um, the, the form of his two runs at, at Cheltenham, the, the, the twice before, are just so strong in terms of handicap form. Um, and, and the run behind El Dorado Allen just looks better and better. Uh, he's, the handicap is just taking a chance, just leaving him on the same mark. Now, I, I always thought that something just, need, something just needed a change for him to just, you know, come alive off this mark. And uh, going up to three miles, I think, could just be could just be the ticket for him so i was happy to settle with him i i thought this was a very difficult race i, I love Ann sam I, i'm a massive fan of Ann sam uh five star getaway i honestly almost came down on myself um galahad quest even going up to three miles inter interest me the big breakaway obviously on him last time uh, over hurdles uh, you know nearly won a grade one at this track uh, behind sham blue um there's just a lot to like about a lot of these in all honesty but uh i just thought the way the race shaped i thought zanza could be coming with a with a late run to pick up the pieces yeah so both of the lads there were favorable mentions for zanza which does make me slightly nervous because as you say i did like his profile overall i thought he was a, a significant danger then to bounce back for zanza in the 337 then at kempton so daryl well, i'll if the connection's got any sense, they'll just uh, withdraw or bar one of the horses. So that one will walk over, get 150 grand, and they'll split it about 11 grand each. Exactly. Why has no one thought of that yet? It's genius. <laughs> the way British racing should go and probably is going. Um, yeah. And a handy little tip then for Andrew for, for the connections of these runners. But Daryl, I will go back to you, please, for anything else from Kempton. No, I'm quite light this week in terms of on selection, mm. I think. Yeah, it is tricky, isn't it? I, I thought the exact same. Andrew, anything else from Kempton? Uh, nothing for me, thanks, Kate. Not at all. We will move on then to our second meeting of the day. We'll move to Lingfield now. So switching to the all weather, we begin with the listed Heaver Sprint Stakes with four year olds and over, over five furlongs, six declared runners. So, Andrew, who wins it? Uh, yeah, this is a uh, cracking one. I've tipped Exalted Angel in the Racing Football Outlook this week. I do like Carl Burke in uh, Class 1 all weather sprints. Uh, he's only had 22 runners since 2010, six of them have won, profit of £31.50, spy catcher of course, um, beat uh, his stable mate into second in that good six furlong listed race here last month, say so Exalted Angel also running that race, uh, finishing six, I thought he'd appreciate the cut back to five furlongs and uh, he had a good chance, what is he, about three to one, something like that, which seems fair enough, uh, Lord Ridderford heads the market, he won this one last year, um, I just wonder about the, the, the pace, though, whether he's going to end up on the sort of you know, in, on the inside, which has um, not been riding um, quick at all at recent uh, Lingfield meetings. Uh, Mont Damage hasn't raced on Polytrack before, unlike six of the last seven winners, which would be a worry, and he's a bit of a quirky old so and so. Yeah. Strong power. It's a bit of a machine from off the pace, um, but he was withdrawn at Newcastle earlier this week with a vet certificate. So I just wonder. Um, what the problem is, if there is one indeed there. Uh, one night stand, the outside of the field, I thought he'd go well. All his wins have come over six, uh, but it was a cracking effort when he led on the dead rail. He, d he used up loads of petrol early to get across from store wide, uh, store 10 uh, out wide, raced in the swamp on the inside rail. He still finished a two length 50 to one fifth enlisted company over six. He's never raced over five on polytrack. Um, I thought it could suit. And in a small field, and the wind's forecast to be behind them. So if Holly Doyle can stay off the inside rail, one night stand, I think 12 to 1 or thereabouts could go well. So uh, uh, I'll go Exhorted Angel, but I'm certainly going to back one night stand as well. 
Yeah, the outsider of a field, then one night stand, 12 to one cannot be ignored. And and even predicting the wind direction, Andrew, that's very yeah. impressive for this. But Exalted Angel would be the main selection and for Andrew in this 130. Daryl, yourself, please. Yeah, he's good, isn't he? <laughs> um, we won't tell him, though. <laughs> yeah, uh, I actually like strong power. Uh, I know he's got a bit to find on the ratings, mm -hmm. but he recorded a, a course record, didn't he, in his penultimate start here at Lingfield. Um I, I just think he's a he's an absolute speed machine. I think he's very much on the upgrade. I think he arrives in this race on an upward curve where I don't feel a lot of these do. Um, and I wouldn't let Reigns put you off because some of the speeds that some of the times that he's recorded, you know, suggest that he's he's more than capable of mixing it in this sort of company. I thought Exalted Angel was definitely a six furlong horse for me, but um, and would need a, a real strong pace over this five furlongs. I don't know if he'd get it, but. Um, I, yeah, I, I just came down on strong power. I couldn't have him on Demege. I thought Tony Lebron uh, sort of levelled off a little bit with his improvement. And Lord Ridderford, who was the market leader for this earlier in the week, I didn't quite understand it in all honesty. Mm -hmm. So uh, strong power, I thought, seven to one-ish around that sort of mark. I thought it was a fair bet. Yeah, definitely a fair bet at that price, considering the winning streak that he's on have provided he's over whatever that vet self thing they probably wanted. just see that this was worth more money yeah yeah exactly like i'll quickly quickly write this one up for him then yeah he's <laughs> hoping then that that was the case for him so we will move on to the 205 then at lingfield this is a group three winter derby four four-year-olds and over over a mile two eight declared runners daryl back to you please for the winter derby oh i don't like this lord north should just win <laughs> this and that should just be it really mm. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Is that that's it? it yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> no, that's very fair. Like say Lord North is certainly setting the standard on ratings. Anyway, so Daryl playing this with a straight bat. Andrew yourself. Yeah, Lord North probably. I mean, he's got the patient style that's you know usually ideal for Lingfield at the moment because it could you know should see him not race on the in the dead rail on the dead rail in this one. Uh, he's been off for 11 months, but he goes well fresh and he's the class act. I didn't like Alan Kerr. He, he was last seen running the uh, finishing ninth in the arc. Uh, this is all weather debut today, though, and, and he did finish behind um, Fantasy Man uh, when the pair clashed in listed company at Haydock um, the season before last. Now, um, Fancy Man, I mean, when he runs on soft turf or poly track, four wins in a second from five starts, the defeat by three quarters of a length. Uh, I thought he's, you know, the obvious one, um, you know, without the favourites or, you know, he, I mean, I've bet him each way five to one. I thought that was a huge price, really, um, given his uh, profile on Polytrack. Uh, and King of the South the other, is the other one I'd bet. Uh, he, oh, finished second. Yeah, he finished second to um, Fancy Man last time. Mate. You look at his record over a mile, of, over 10 furlongs or further on the all-weather. 11 runs, six wins, five places. Uh, he's back up in trip after finishing second to Fancy Man, where they went steady. You know, hopefully... I mean, the better class of um, opposition will produce a stronger pace, and uh, twenty. He's twenty-five to one. Yeah, that's massive, and, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's the wrong price. I mean, the twenty to one is wrong. He should be sort of twelve, fourteen, something like that. You know, you you worry is that one of the hundred to one shots uh, is withdrawn, and you're only looking at two places instead of the three. But if you can get on each way at twenty fives, get that fifth of the odds five to one the place. Given that he's never finished out of the first three and eleven runs over ten furlongs or further on your weather, it's a huge price. Yeah, it is it definitely. And as you say, if, if I mean, if that price stands and if we get all declared runners turning up, then it's still a fair price. But definitely to note then, in case we do have our places reduced and, and what that's going to do to his price of 25 to 1 currently advertised. So King of the South is an interesting play, but both of the lads keen on Lord North for the win and don't want to deter you basically from him as the 10 to 11 favourite currently. So Andrew, back to you, please, for anything else from Lingfield. Um, shoot to kill on the 240. My, my nap last week finished a close third over seven furlongs here. He hit the front too soon, was a little bit keen. He got done by two horses who came late and wide down the outside. So, uh, different jockey today, back up to a mile. He won over course and distance the time before. Um, hopefully, he can uh, be held on to for a little bit longer this time and stay wide under George Adobe. Yep, that's horse number six. Shoot to kill then in the 240 at Lingfield for Andrew. Daryl, anything else from Lingfield for you? No, thank you. Not at all. We will move on then to Newcastle with our one scheduled race from Newcastle. This is also our final race we're going to be covering as well, which is the Ida Handicap Chase for five rods and over, over four mile one. It doesn't necessarily look as though it's going to be the slog, though, that we usually expect from this race. Uh, for all evidently, it's going to seriously take some getting all the same. But the ground is currently good to soft with bright, breezy conditions forecast between now and Saturday. So hopefully... 
not the sites that we saw in the Grand National Trial from last weekend, where we only had sort of how many finishes in the end? Not many. So hopefully we won't get quite that then with the Ida. So Daryl, who are you siding with in this staying test? Yeah, I like one in here. I like uh, Raf Ann Lure. Um, mm-hmm. This is a Rose Dobbin horse. She won this race back in 2016, was it? 2016, yeah. Um, this horse is very unexposed. Uh, he's only had three chase starts. He's won two of them. Um, it, the one he didn't win was his latest re- return after a 399-day layoff. But I thought he shaped really well at air over three miles. It just really did shape like a horse that just needed the run. Um, he has won off a break previously, but... Um, he just looked like he, he just literally just ran like he was going to make his challenge and then he just blew up. Um, mm. I think this has probably been the plan for him. I think he's very well handicapped. The, the handicapper dropped him four pounds for that seasonal return run. Um, his two starts last or in 2020, he won by 10 lengths off a handicap mark of 129. Um, beating a uh, Tana Pino, who's rated 129. Uh, and his start before that, he beat Al Nadam, who's rated 139. Manila Trump back in third. We had 127. That was over two and a half miles on heavy. But this horse has always been, they said it immediately after this Carl Arwin, it's always been a real stayer for the future. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I love everything about him. I love the way he goes through his race. He will definitely get this trip. Um, I know he's stepping up quite a, quite a bit in distance from three miles to um, to four miles, but he's so unexposed at staying distances. He won his novice hurdle here at Newcastle in really impressive fashion as well. So the course will be no issue. He's he, he's certainly capable of this mark of 131. I think you can get about 16 to one on him. Um, I think he's got a big, big chance. He, he just brings that unexposed um, part to the race and, and it still could yet be anything. And his form warrants the fact, warrants him a higher mark than 131. So um, yeah, I think, he, I think he'll take a good bit of beating actually. Oh, I like that. I like that. And I'm also happy that you got to say his name first before I had to. So, Rafa and Leo. Well, yeah, I'm going to surprise you now. Um, oh, yes. Well, one, I'm tipping the same horse. Oh, and, okay. And, and two, I thought I'm bound to pronounce this wrong. So, I went to um, listen to some previous commentaries. And uh, our radio colleague, Darren Owen, pronounced the horses Raf on your. Oh. Um, <laughs> and, uh, so I knew he was. I'm, I'm, I'm going with Darren because he's a professional, not a Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> if you rely on me for pronunciation, yeah. you've got the wrong guy. <laughs> I, I normally butcher Gaelic names. Uh, I'm embarrassed to say, but so uh, yeah, Raph on your. Uh, yeah, I think, I think the key to this one is um, the stiff track, and um, he's he's got beaten every time he's had a flat track. When he's had a stiff test of stamina, he's gone up a hill. He's had four runs, um, three wins in a second. The second came here at Newcastle over a mile, uh, over two miles six. It was on the sharp side. He was uh, staying on. So yeah, like um, Daryl says, I think um, you know you'll, you'll relish this test of stamina. And again, this is not this has not been a, uh, a race for young horses aged eight or younger in recent years since 2014. Not from 38, um, the expected wins was sort of closer to three. Um, so I'll be you know t- taking on Eclair de Cerf, who I think his favourite history of fashion and check it out as well. Also fall into that category. And in the same period, if you just backed any horse who is nine or older carrying eleven stone two or less. Uh, you'd have made a profit. You'd have hit the last seven winners from 54 bets uh, and made £25.50. I know the going's quicker than it often is in this race, but I still think um, those bookies offering six places won't have too much to worry about because they're probably going to be four or five finishers. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah the, the the others on the radar, as well as uh, Rath on the oil, said it again, uh, were uh, Win My Wings. Uh, mm-hmm. Christian, Christian Williams does really well with his long travellers. He's just had a winner at uh, Sedgefield as we're recording. And... Um, when they travel over 250 miles from his base, uh, as the wind my wings will, they do really well. He's about 20 to 1. Just your type, I thought I had to squeak for Charlie Longston and um, Danilo uh, Derry, who's uh, three from three over fences and didn't appreciate the return to hurdles last time out. But yeah, I'm really keen on this uh, wrath on Europe. Oh, so both of them going for a horse that we have no idea how to pronounce. But yeah, <laughs> Rathan Yor. Okay, then we'll we'll go with that. We will trust in Darren Owen. We trust is is the old saying. So we will go with that. Um, but it is going to be fascinating to see. And I've actually got my final bet in this race as well. And I had initially looked at him. My only concern about him is that sole start then this season rather than I ideally want a bit of conditioning really for this race but every other box he takes you know nine-year-old sweet spot 131 rated I love everything about him Rose Dobbins had a really good season as has Craig Nichols so there's nothing not to like about his profile apart from that was just a slight concern then for me about him so instead I've gone with two here 
I'm scared that both of them are going to be ridden too far forwards in this race, which isn't a great start, but I'm still going to side with them. The first being Court Master, who was a winner last time out. That came at Newcastle, but over two miles seven. He jumped really well. He did make all and saw out the trip strongly, but it was only a three run of race. He did what was expected. Hopefully that will then tee him up for this race back up in trip. He's best on a sound surface. So it looks as though it's going to, as I say, the forecast is going to be in his favor therefore for Saturday and he shouldn't get the slog that may just test him on that basis. So he was the first one. And the other one was cash to ash at a bigger price here who may also be in danger of being ridden too far forwards, but again, did run well to finish second in each of his four starts this season. He has climbed a handicap seven pound in the process, but certainly has the stamina because he showed that on his penultimate start when finishing second in the Lincolnshire National. He again should give his running as long as they don't make masses of him. And again, the ground won't really be an issue no matter what it turns up, I didn't think. So there are my two main selection court master though for me so loads of different selections in the ida from the team but andrew i'll go back to you for anything else from newcastle please uh no not for me thank you no. daryl no not for me thank you no. and then daryl anything from anywhere else no no andrew <laughs> um ditto <laughs> no ditto done right naps that's the only thing then i have to get from you before we wrap up so andrew your nap please a wrath on your in the ida the 315 at newcastle oh okay daryl Raph on your oh, in the eye doing the three fifteen and who can't? It is. I don't think that's it's ever happened before, is it? No, I don't think ever. No. No. Yeah, you know, we should, we should have bogged that the galloping bear last week. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Exactly. Look how well that worked out. And you didn't both nap him. So this is making me extra edgy then. The fact you're both agreeing with a nap. I'm very nervous because I am not on the same horse. So I may as well give up now. So I'm not going to go in the Ida for my nap. I'm instead going to go for five star getaway in the 3.37 then at Kempton for my nap. Oh, goodness me, I'm scared now. OK, but thank you so much to the lads, obviously, for all of their hard work yet again on this week's show. Thank you so much for watching, listening, tuning in to all of us again. So best of luck with your bets this weekend and we will catch up with you again next week. <laughs>